Um, so, in SolidWorks, when you first start the program, it should be on your screens, right? I think my TA went over and started them all. <clears throat> you get you get this screen right here, and so what it's telling you. So, you basically in SolidWorks you have three different types of files. Can you guys see? It? Yes. <laughs> oh. now, some of them aren't. Some of them lose the connection sometimes. So, if yours loses that, either look up front or look at the guy next to you. Uh, I can see. It. <laughs> um, so we basically have a part file, another file for assemblies, and another part for draw, another file for drawings. And how it works is your part file stores the actual part information. And then the assembly file kind of looks back at that part file. The same thing with the drawing file. The drawing file looks back at the assembly file and then back at the part file. So if you delete the part file, even if you have the assembly and drawing files, nothing will show up. So you want to really keep uh, each project in a folder so they can find stuff. So if you have the part file in one directory and the drawing file in another directory, they're not going to be able to find each other. So you want to keep them all in one folder all together. So the part file is this SLD PRT file. Um, SLD ASM for the assembly and DRW for the drawing. So those are just the file names and they, they like these nice long file extensions. Um, so when you get started, you tell it part and you'd say OK. So I go to new. Part selected, I say OK. <clears throat> so on yours, it might come up first and ask, what kind of measurements do you want to use? Um, it, 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 is that, when you hit new, that might come up. Yeah, if it my, does, what? I was just going to say, my SolidWorks doesn't do that. Yeah, the first time, you, the first time you run it, it'll do it. And these haven't been run yet. Oh, so, OK. So it'll probably come up. Um, and so you'll click on it and tell it, we're going to use IPS, inch, pounds, and seconds, English measurements. Um, so we'll do that today. If somebody's already done that on there, how can you change it? Because um, every time I go to do a, a part, i got to change it from a metric to... Okay. So that would be up here... See, every time I do that, okay. it doesn't stay there. Though. It doesn't stay there. Every time you close down the part and you go to start a new part, it starts back Let's up the metric. Here without a part open. Kind of the interface. We have kind of the SolidWorks is doing this before they did the ribbon uh, with Windows stuff. So we've got kind of our main toolbar here, which is our features one. So we want to work in features. We're not working in circles that are extruded. We're working, we're working, in, we're working in actual features that we have. So we'd make an extrusion and then you could make a hole or make a fillet and so we can use those those smart features over here <clears throat> um, we have this section 
are the, the ads. So these are all adding material to our model. Mm -hmm. This section is all removing, removing material from our model. <coughs> and then this is the, the, the extra stuff, the smart stuff. And then reference geometry here. And we'll spend next Friday talking about the reference geometry. We'll spend a, a whole day talking about that. Um, and then from that, we can also do the lofts. Uh, here, so then we have a sketch. And so once you start here, it's going to ask you where to sketch. And then it, I'm going to take you to that tab. Over here, when you're in a sketch, you can accept it or cancel it. Go to sketch. And then you have to already evaluate, which we talked about in the third session. So today is the, the first, this week and next week is the first section. And then there's the, the advanced, or the, the intermediate, and then the advanced. In the advanced, we'll talk about uh, some of the, just some basics on some of the different evaluation and the simulation tools. Uh, some dimension stuff, and then some of the other SolidWorks Office products. Uh, for like the toolbox, uh, if you have installed uh, the circuit works for the circuitry, motion, uh, the, the extra uh, simulation, the, the tool analyst, and that, depending on what type of file you have, different things show up. Um, then over here, it's kind of the browser, and so this part right here, we can see some different tabs and properties, configuration, so the configuration would be if you have one model with a hole, one model without a hole, it's the same basic part, that would be a configuration. Or when you do an assembly, you'd want to have an assembly with it closed and an assembly with it open. Those are going to be different, different configurations in that assembly. Um, some other properties, and then the appearance for rendering and that. But this one's where we're going to stay today. So here, you can set your material. Then we have our planes, so I'll probably go back to, I can pick up my planes, and they're there. If you go off of it, um, it'll go away. If you want to see it, you can right click on it, and click on the little glasses. Now it'll turn on, so even if you pick another one, that one will stay on. I know some people that like to turn on and they like to see their planes. I personally don't like that. Because um, once you start making geometry, you're probably not going to use the base planes again. Um, so I like to just leave those off um, so that they're not in the way. And then we have the origin point, which is our zero, zero. And then as we start adding things, it's going to start listing them here. And the order that they're here is how it's processing. Because it's actually, you, whenever you're doing something, it's going through looking at that process and that order to see how to build it. So if you take two things and you switch the order, it might switch how the part looks. Um, so we'll talk about all that and we'll just get to making you know, like extra features. Um, so that's kind of, that's the history-based part of, of parametrics. They have new parametric modeling called um, direct modeling. So like uh, Proys, uh, Creo and um, there's another one. There's another new one out, and then like Autodesk has Inventor Fusion, which it has the history. Some of them have no history at all. Once you make it, it's there, but then you can grab it and move it around. So if you put a hole in it, then you just drag the hole wherever you want. It doesn't matter that what, which order is put in. But this one, it really matters the order that you put it in. Um, and then, because if you delete something higher up, if you delete a feature here, it might affect a feature down below. And so if you do that, You've done it before, huh? It almost always does. And then you get a bunch of messed up stuff. You have to figure out how to try and fix that, those other sketches. Um, so that's part of the, the planning that goes into it on how you're going to make it so that you don't run into that stuff. So questions on this part, the interface? Right. So when we start creating a model, kind of the, the planning of it, figure out how you're going to make it. Then after we're going to start drawing, we're going to go to, to extrude, and we're going to pick a sketch plane. We're going to tell which face we want to draw on. So some things 
I want to start drawing on kind of this plane. Some I want to draw on this plane, some I want to draw on this plane. Kind of depends on how I want to look at that thing most of the time. Most of the time I want to look at it in isometric, and I want it so that way it's sitting, either the piece on my desk that I'm drawing from is looking like that, or my sketch that I have is laid out the same way. Because nothing is worse than having a sketch that's laid out one way, and then your model is turned a different way. And then you're trying to, okay, is that the same? Because I have students that do that all the time. They'll, they'll just start drawing on any, any plane and not realize and then they go to isometric view and it's like turned that way instead of that way. And then they have to try and rotate around so they can see it again. <clears throat> so you want to kind of take that into account. So we'll pick a sketch plane. And then we're going to sketch a profile. And it's going to be a rough profile. And so when I say rough, I mean the basic shape. Not, don't try and get exact numbers. Just try and get the right number of lines and kind of the right relationships. Um, and keep it simple. This is one of the things there where I differ from other thing, other people. Um, I say always keep simple sketches. Eight lines for your boundary max. I prefer to have my boundaries being less than six lines. And so if I need extra construction lines, those don't count in that number. Um, the simpler your sketches are, that means you're going to have more features. And it's going to be easier to do all those and, and change each one. Um, the downside is having complex sketches means that if you make a change, SolidWorks regenerates the file faster. So having lots of stuff slows, is a little slower to re regenerate. Having big complex things is faster to regenerate. But big complex sketches like that could take a couple hours to constrain. Whereas simple sketches would take 10 seconds to constrain. So if you got something here that, I mean, how many dimensions is this? I don't know, probably 10 dimensions in there. I don't know, that's. Probably 60 dimensions plus other geometric constraints if they had them. But doing this with a couple features, you could probably take the number of dimensions way down, but also the constraints you had to add up way down also. And so by doing some of these as geometric constraints instead of dimensional constraints, would make it simpler. Um, so I prefer simple. Unless it's something that's really complex that I need to have all that complexity in it, then I might go over the eight. That's very rare. I'd rather keep it real simple. Okay. <clears throat> so, so I'm going to do that one. Extrude. Let's turn it on. Something is going on mine that it. So this one right here, that's you pick your view. I'm going to plug that for now. Pick that front of play. So it took me to looking straight at it. I don't like to do that. If you press the, your mouse wheel, it'll let you rotate it. So pressing your mouse wheel lets you orbit your view. You can see my UCS is moving. I always like to be in some kind of isometric. I never like drawing straight at it. Why do you think so? Because you can't see the extrude. Yeah, you can't see what's going back, and you might think you're getting something, but you're actually using it's behind it. Or so I always like looking at an isometric. Um, I think it works better, and I always recommend that you try. It. I have people that want to look at it straight on, and it works until they mess up and they pick something else or they don't see it right. Uh, but there are times that I will look at it straight on if I want to check something or something like that. Yeah. Is there like a center up button? So you get like all lost in the orientation? Uh, if you go here, um, but also with six dents. This one doesn't change your, your orientation, but it does bring it back to the center of the screen. Um, that's zoom on window. Um, this one goes back to your previous view, whatever it was. Um, sections, we'll talk about that later. This is kind of 
the basic one. If you want to look straight at a plane, you could use this one. So it'll look normal to that plane. Um, or you can just do one of your isometrics or front, side, top, bottom, back. Um, and then this one changes what it looks like. I like shaded with edges, so I like to be able to see where my edges are. Um, if you want to not see edges for like tangencies and things, you can just do shaded or hidden or hidden with hidden lines or just wireframe. So a lot of times I'll either do shaded with edges or wireframe. Those are the two that I use. I never do any other ones. I want one of those two. I think every once in a while I might use the hidden, but that one does nothing. I'd rather see it shaded. Um, so now I'm going to kind of draw something out. So I'm going to draw, I'm just going to line. I'm going to, I'm going to start here. I always want something to relate back to the origin. Because if you're not related to the origin, you can never constrain your sketch. You might have the, the sketch constrained to itself, but it can move anywhere, and that's not good. So we always want it related back to this, the origin sometimes. So usually, maybe a corner of a part on the origin, or I'd line it up so it's centered on the origin. Why would I want to center it on the origin? For mirroring? Yeah, for mirroring. Because then I have a, a mirror plane right down the middle already. So then I, could, I don't have to make a new plane for that. <coughs> um, so I'm just going to do a little L shape. And so if you hold control and the middle wheel, you pan. Just pull the middle wheel, you orbit, and then zoom. Point toward you, zooms in, pushing away, zooms out. So as I move, see right there, what happened? What changed? Right here. There. See that little yellow thing? Little yellow line right there? It's telling me that that line is now going to be horizontal. So that's adding a constraint. So it's adding a geometric constraint to it, saying that this line is going to be horizontal. Now as I bring this up, now that one's going to be vertical. Okay, I'm bring this over. And I'm just not going to do that one. No. I'm not going to constrain those. So let's look you straight out that. So these two are nice, horizontal, vertical. I can see the constraint there. If I grab that corner, try and move it, those two lines are going to stay horizontal, vertical. I can't. I can't move that corner up and down. It can move side to side. I grab here with this corner, with that corner around. I can see how it moves. So this is how I always test sketches. So when I'm doing a sketch, I try and work it and make it do as many geometric constraints as possible before I start adding dimensional constraints. <clears throat> because if you have it so it's moving correctly, things that are tangent are supposed to be that are supposed to be tangent. They're tangent. Things that are supposed to be perpendicular. They're perpendicular. You don't have to add a bunch of other dimensions. Things that should be the same size are the same size. Uh, things that should line up collinear, line up. That takes off dimensions you have to add later. That also means that if you want to change it, now it's one thing you change instead of two things. I'm going to kind of pull that back down. So I want to make this line perpendicular to that line, right? So I'm just going to pick on that. Click on that. So hold shift and I pick on both of them. And now I can see my list of constraints. So in SolidWorks, your constraints don't show up until you actually pick things. And it gives you the ones that are only applicable to, to that those two things you picked. So, and it kind of highlights or bolds the one that it thinks you want. So that, as those are pretty close to perpendicular. Is that what you want? You can tell them to be parallel, but probably not. You can tell them to be equal. This one fix. Should you use that? Anyone use fix? 
You want to use fix before? No, don't use fix. Because what, what fix does is it just does it however you drew it. So it has a very limited use. Um, when I was at um, a Shimano job shop, we'd have people bring in things. They'd cut with the plasma. And they said, I want 50 of these. So I couldn't measure it and draw it out. So I'd have to trace it on a piece of paper, scan it, draw it over an AutoCAD to get exactly what they wanted. So that one I'd bring in, that one I'd fix. There's no way I could constrain that. But other than stuff like that, don't use fix. It's just, it makes it so you can't change anything later on. And you don't know where that is to begin with. So, so don't use fix. So I'll say for particular there, take those two for particular. All those will be parallel. Particular. So it's there, and now I can grab these corners and see how it's moving. So how else can I constrain this? Could I just make this one horizontal, and that one horizontal, and that vertical, and that vertical? Yeah, I could have done that. So it kind of doesn't matter. But it, maybe if I know that this one might change an angle, and I know that this is going to stay perpendicular to that, no matter what angle this changes, then I might want to make this one perpendicular, and then maybe not do this, but maybe if I change it later, I can always take that off and add an angle. So if I decided that, oh, I really want this to be at 60 degrees, but that's to say perpendicular. I do. Double click on that. Now I can come over here and delete that vertical. Now I can dimension that. This one was perpendicular to that one also. I probably wanted to take off that perpendicular and then make this one vertical. So you can see how picking which constraints you want in anticipation of how it might change later on to make it easier to work with. I just set that back. So I could do that if I if I know if I'm pretty sure it's going to change. I might start it with an angle just to be safe. But to put the constraint in and delete the constraint doesn't take that much time. Uh, and you can always reconstrain it if you realize, oh, I should have done it this way instead. You can always double click on it, delete the constraint, add this constraint you want back in. Okay. So we kind of get it, get the rough shape. Get it so it's moving correctly. Things that you want to be tangent, they're tangent. Um, that's, that's another thing that I... If I had... If I had that same kind of part, but I wanted to fill it there, should I do that, fill it on the sketch? Should I draw that arc on the sketch? Probably, I wouldn't. Because I can draw that with a sharp corner, right? So I would draw with a sharp corner. Anything that I can do and I can draw with a sharp corner, I'd do it. But if I had... That, and I was only given dimension to the top of that, could I draw that with a sharp corner? So if I was given this dimension, yeah. could I draw that with a sharp corner and in the sketch? I have to find this, where that point is there, though, right? And so on this one, it'd be easier to draw the arc in the sketch. Because now I can dimension from the top of the arc to the bottom line. So in that case, I'd want to use the arc in the sketch. But if, I knew, if they gave me the dimension to the sharp corner, I'd draw it sharp and then I'd do the felt later. <coughs> um, So 
So after I've added all my constraints, forget it going, then I can start adding dimensions to it. Um, never talk about that. And then I would extrude or evolve the feature. Um, So here's some basic types of constraints. So we have perpendicular, parallel. If I pick on that, see, I have a couple others. I have coincident. What is coincident? Coincident do what? Yeah, they're, they're together. So you do coincident to a point in line. That point is going to stay on that line, and not necessarily on the line, but in line with it. So if I did coincident, I could bring that above it, but it's still coincident. If I do coincident with two points, it merges those two points. So if you have something that if you want to make a closed sketch, and you're going to have a line somewhere, you can make the two endpoints coincident, and it'll join them together. And just having them in the same spot isn't the same as having them coincident. Because if they can move separate, it's not going to find it as a closed sketch. to line up. So that's only with two lines. And now those are collinear. I also have equal. So now when I change one, that one. I change both. So if you're doing something that you know that you're going to have equal measurements and they're always going to be equal, use equal. Um, if you're going to have different arcs on the outside of the shape and you're using doing the arcs on the sketch, make those arcs equal so you don't have to dimension one of them. <clears throat> Makes it a lot easier when you go back to change. Or even in just the constraint at the first time. Um, also when you click on something, you have an option for construction. And so now it's not going to try and use that line as part of the profile. So if you're using something and you're just using it to kind of find another point, or something, make it construction. Don't don't leave it a regular part of the profile because then it won't be able to close the profile. Or if you have a solid line in the middle here, it won't know what to do. So make sure if it's not part of your outside profile, make it construction. So now, unlike AutoCAD, where you, you draw it exact and the dimension just reads whatever the line is, with parametrics, you change the number on the dimension, it changes the geometry. That's what makes it more powerful, that the number controls the geometry, not the other way around. Um, <clears throat> so you can use a static number, so you can tell it two inches, or three inches, or whatever, or you can use an equation. So why would you want to use an equation in a, in a measurement or in a, in a dimension? You want to have any ideas? you want to dimension. Don't pick the endpoints, pick on the line. Um, I could say 
if you look at it, it says 0 0.24 uh, inches. So I can say that I want this thing, I did this really small, right? Maybe I'm going to delete that. Let's start with this bigger one down here. And I want to make that 2 inches minus 3 millimeters. And then figure out what that was. So you do that at all, you have, you're doing your part in inches, but you have a, something else that you're using that has metric measurements and maybe a spacing or something. So you don't have to figure it out, just type it in and it puts it in. When you go back to that edit though, it just shows you the result, it doesn't show you the equation. So you'd have to type out the whole thing again if you wanted to change how many millimeters that was. But you can do complex equations with parentheses and everything. Um, mixing feet and centimeters and inches and millimeters and whatever. I'm just going to say that's two. But I'll say that's four. And let's say I want this one to always be half that one. No matter what size I make this, I want this one to be half of it. That's where that equation comes in. So I can pick on it, pull it out, then right here I can say add equation. And then I'm just going to say equal, so D4, so it numbers them, D1, D2, D3, D4. So this one's D4. So D4 I had at sketch 2, this is sketch number 2 that I did on this, um, equals, and I'm going to say that it's this one, so that was dimension 3, divided by 2. Okay. Well, now, if I go in and change this one to three, that changes also. So, what if we don't have dimension for any medications? What? What if, what, if, what if we don't have dimension for that in mind? You'd have to, you'd have to use it to, to. You could do this one first, and then say that, do this one, and do this, that one times two. You'd have to put them in one at a time. So, you should, you'd have to have one of them predefined. So, just uh, as an example. The top line doesn't have dimension right yeah. now. So can he uh, use the equation without dimension? Oh, oh, I mean make make it extrude without dimensions? Perfect. Don't. No. I think he was asking if you can make a relation or use the equation to uh, use so that, that line. No, you'd have to make it related to another uh, dimension. Okay. You'd have to know what that, that is. And if you click on the dimension, you'll see right here the name of the, the dimension. But I don't think you can do it just on that line, but let's check. Oh, yeah, it can. Okay. It's the upgraded. I haven't done equations in SOLIDWORKS in a while. So, <coughs> so that I can. That one. might be another issue with that. Oh. I always just do it based on another dimension. Because uh, I put a dimension on that and then base it on that dimension. It's an easier way to do it. Um, but you always want to make sure that you do dimension everything. You can see as I dimension it, they're turning black. Black means that it's constrained. So it's not going to be able to move around. And you want to make sure the whole thing is constrained before you move on to the next step. Oh, that one is working because you make a constraint for a left hand side by three inches. What was that? Because you once before you choose the line instead of dimension. And that one is not working because you make a left hand side line constraint, which is three but, inches. But this one still could have changed. Um, so I don't know why that was I'll have to look at it later. I'll I'll figure it out. Okay. Um, so it's fully constrained now. Right? All black, it's fully constrained. Now I can tell it, finish the sketch, and now it's going to let me take, take me right into extrusion. Because I had picked on extrude when I first started. If I had picked on revolve, it would take me right into revolve. Um, if you had gone to sketch and done create a sketch, 
then you hit finish and it take you just back to nothing. And you'd have to click on extrude or revolve. <clears throat> so now you can tell it how do you want it to extrude. Right now I don't have any of this other stuff. I have mid plane. So mid plane goes halfway each way. So this is another way to get symmetrical parts and have a plane going down the middle. <clears throat> um, or you can do blind. We'll do the other ones later on. We have extra more geometry to use. We can tell it how far to go, so one inch there. We can also do direction two and tell it to go backwards half an inch. So now I can have it not centered on the plane. So mid plane, it's centered on the plane. Now I have going one distance one way, one distance the other way. And that can have a different constraint. So it could be blind or it could be up to another surface or something else like that. Or I can do thin, so now it'll do thin wall parts. I can say, okay, and there it is. So that's that first part. This will work now. I think it was, I don't know what was going on. Um, I really want to show you guys the 3D maps. Because when I, when I use it, and I have a bigger one that's older, um, but when I use mine, I'm over twice as fast. Just because I'm not even going to stop to rotate, and I can just keep going in the command. Um, How much do they cost? These are like 90 bucks, um, regular price. You get them on eBay lot cheaper. They have uh, like a $250 one, they have a $350 one. But last year, they were doing the previous year clearance, and the $350 ones were selling on eBay for like 50 bucks. <laughs> and those have like an LCD screen, and you can set customized commands all over the place. And so you do a lot of the stuff you do on the keyboard on that. These just USB plugins? Yeah. Side to side, I twist it, I can roll it back, forward and back. serial connection um, yeah but it works really good it, it so works with all the new stuff it's just I have to put the driver for the serial one and then do the add-ins for all the programs from the new driver um, but it's nice having escape and shift and control right there plus look at and uh, isometric view just right there with one, within a button uh, to get to and these have two buttons on them that you can set up so actually, I'm going to do that right now. Button. I'm going to write the. That's one, because you can add the, the custom commands if. Yeah. I'll, I'll figure out what the, sheet, the keyboard shortcut is. But there, in SOLIDWORKS, I don't really use keyboard shortcuts a lot for anything. But if you know what the keyboard shortcut is, you can do it, the customized commands and tell it to use that keyboard shortcut. Um, so like that one would always be that symmetric. Actually, it is. All right, no, it's fit. So that button right now, the, the left button is fit. The right button brings up the menu. So, but 
just by doing this, so that way you can pick something, flip it around, pick something out, and you're not having to hold your mouse and move your mouse while you're trying to, to spin it and, and zoom and, and all that stuff. And especially on assemblies, that's where it really kicks in. So then you're not having to. Uh, so there's that part. So go ahead and do something similar to that. To do a, an L shape, a real simple shape like that. Um, so you kind of get the feel of it and see how it's working. I know you're tired of hearing me talk. <laughs>